Happy New Year! Amen! We made it! All right! <laughs> Praise the Lord! We're getting ready to get started in another victorious year in the Lord. Amen? And all you guys are invited. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. We're going to have a wonderful time. And Adam's family is with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see you guys again. And all those live streaming, Happy New Year. Amen. I pray you guys are jumping up and down and praising the Lord right now. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to once again have a wonderful time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh loving God, we thank you, dear Lord, for your love and mercy. And once again, dear Lord, seeing us through another year and bringing us into a year, dear Father, Lord, that once again we can move forward, march forward for your glory to bring honor and praises to your Lord. And as we are here, dear Lord, lift our hearts, dear Lord, through your spirit. That you be glorified. Bless this time together in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You know, we're getting closer to the Lord's coming. Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the dead in Christ shall rise. First, then we'll all rise up to meet him in the air. Then we'll all rise up to meet him in the air. From Malta to Mackay, Big Island to Kauai, we'll all rise up to meet him in the from the beginning. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of the Lord? The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. We'll meet him. Then we'll all rise up to meet him in the air. Then we'll all rise up to meet him in the air. From Malta to Mackay, Big Island to Kauai, we'll all rise up to meet him in the air. Keep on, keep on the fire in I'm excited for that part. Amen, amen. <laughs> you may be seated. <laughs> it just feels like it. It's getting close. Praise God. We got we gotta keep busy. <laughs> amen. There will be a great reunion in the sky when the Savior comes again. Hallelujah. Shall see them by and by when the Savior comes again. Glory, glory, hallelujah! What a wondrous day! Not a Christian will. Shout the dead in Christ shall all arise when the Savior comes again. Living ones caught up to meet him in the sky when the Savior comes again. Not a 
When the Savior comes again, one last time. When the Savior comes again. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> Let's worship the Lord. Father God, I give. beginning. I 
just want to be where you are in your dwelling place forever take me to the place where you are I just want to be with you all stand from the beginning I just want to be where you are dwelling daily in your presence I don't want to worship from afar draw me near to where just want to be where you are in your dwelling place forever take me to that place where you are I just want to be to be where you are, Lord. I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, dwelling in your presence, and feasting, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, surrounded by your I 
I don't know what you guys are facing this New Year's. I don't know where you're at with the Lord. But this song remind me, reminds me that God will meet you wherever you're at this morning. You may be facing some trials, some hardships. God will meet you where you're at. That's our desire. We should always desire to be in the presence of God. God is always in our presence, but sometimes we take ourselves out of that, his presence because we face so much things in our lives. Sometimes we push God on our side and want, want to deal with that situation on our, on our own. Amen? But maybe you heard this morning, God is reminding us of his presence. Whatever you're facing this morning, be reminded that God will meet you where you're at. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Wonderful time of praise and worship to bring us into the presence of God. Amen. To bring us into the presence of God. This morning, we want to go to prayer. We want to lift up our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We want to lift up those that are struggling, that, that before I even go to this prayer list, maybe you need to, to spend some time with the Lord. The altars will be open. The altars is open. You may spend some time with the Lord, but we, we want to keep those in prayer. We want to keep Brother Eddie in prayer, Sister Gwen Flores and Sister B. Gallardi in prayer. Let's continue to keep our Brother John Ng in prayer. Galen Let's continue to keep her in prayer for healing. Also, P. Ilani Smith, let's continue to keep her in prayer. Let's also continue to keep um, our sister here in prayer, Denise, still uh, looking for God's direction. Once again, let's continue to keep her in prayer as we lift her up before you. Pablito, let's continue to keep him in prayer. He's in Capona Viola, recovering. Amen. It didn't look good, but not. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The last time I saw him, he was on a ventilator. But look, look at him now. It's not because of us. It's not because of the, those doctors. It's because of God. Amen. We've put our trust and faith in God. We did our part and we prayed, and God gives get all the glory. Amen? So let's continue to keep uh, Pabito in prayer. Edna, let's continue to keep Edna in prayer. That's Sister Carol's aunt, 101 years old. Amen. Amen. God is good. But she's right now she's uh, still dealing with some health issues, pneumonia. So let's continue to keep her in prayer. Trent. Ali'i, let's continue to keep these prayers, um, these people in prayer. Nohel, as we want to lift her up once again, continue to lift her up before the Lord. All of our unsaved loved ones, as we lift up uh, Sister Blossom's unsaved loved ones, let's continue to lift up our unsaved loved ones. How many of you guys have unsaved loved ones? I'm going to always ask that question just to remind you, as I remind myself, keep on praying for them. Nothing is impossible with God. Amen? We may think that God cannot save them, but God can. So let's continue to keep our unsaved loved ones in prayer. The altars are open. Once again, you may spend some time with the Lord. If not, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, praising you, Lord. Just thank you, Father, Lord, for bringing us through another year, Lord God. Lord, for all of us, Lord God, 
we had so, those good days. Lord, we had those also those bad days, Father. But Lord, we are comforted to know, Lord God, that we are never alone in this walk. That we'll never do this walk, this Christian walk alone. That you are in our presence each and every day, Father. And so, Lord, we are thankful, Lord God. We are comforted, Lord God, that, Lord, as we walked through this 2022, Lord God, Lord, you have seen us through time and time again, Lord. Even though some of the, our walks was a rough and trying walk, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We glorify you. We give you the glory and honor, Father, for bringing us through those days, Lord. Lord, as these storms that we've faced this past year, Lord God, that, that took us down, Lord God, that had beaten us, Lord, but, Lord, you have given us strength, Lord God. We have found strength in you, Lord God, because we know that you are in our presence, that, Lord, that you are living in our lives, Lord God, and we thank you for that. So, Lord, we pray, Father, Lord, as we begin this 2023, Lord God, Lord, we know that this road is not an easy walk, Lord God. We are going to face tribulations. We are going to face problems in our lives. But, Lord, we are so thankful, Father, that we can call upon you each and every day to lead us, to guide us, to see us through those rough days, Father. So, Lord, we pray as we begin this year, Lord God, that you would bless your people, Father. And, Lord, as those that are we've been lifting up throughout this year, we will continue to lift them up before you, Father, as we want to lift up our loved ones, our family, our friends, Lord. We want to lift up Brother Eddie. Lord, we want to lift up Sister Gwen, Sister B. Gallardi, Lord God. Father, we want to also lift up Brother John Ng, Lord God. All needs a touch from you, Father, Lord. All need a, need a miracle from you, Lord God. And Father, we pray for a miracle. We pray for your touch upon each and every one of them, Father, Lord. Lord, that you would continue to heal them, strengthen them, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we also pray, Lord God, for Galen. Lord, we pray for her. We lift her up before you once again, Father. Lord, that you would just continue to heal Heal her, Lord God. Whatever cancer that she's facing, Lord God, that you would just touch her, that you would just heal her, Lord Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we also pray for P. Lani, Lord God, also dealing with cancer, Lord God. Father, so many of our loved ones, Father, are, are dealing with cancer, Lord God. And so, Lord, we come before you, Lord, and we ask for a miracle, Lord God. We ask for healing, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you would baffle those doctors, Lord God, that you have done many Time and time again, Lord God, you have baffled these doctors, Lord God, because of your miracle, Lord. So, Lord, we pray and we look for another miracle, Lord God, and these brothers and sisters in the Lord, Lord God, our, our family, Lord God, we lift them up before you. Father, we also pray, Lord God, for Pilani, also dealing with cancer, Lord God, heal her. Lord, touch her, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for Plabito, Lord God. Lord, we give you the glory. We give you the honor, Lord God. We, Lord, we give you the praise, Father, Lord, for healing him for performing a miracle lord god the last time we all saw him father lord he was on a ventilator lord god struggling lord god for his life father but lord we thank you lord god for your healing touch lord god he's in a in a hospital lord god recovering father lord so lord we pray for a complete recovery father in jesus name father we also pray for edna lord god wherever she may be this morning lord god Lord, that you would just touch her, Lord God, and Lord, that she would feel your presence upon her, Lord God. As we commit her into your hands, Father, we pray for healing. We pray for strength. Father, we also pray for Trent, Lord God, that you would deliver him from this cult. Father, we pray for Ali'i, Lord God. Lord, for safety, Lord God, as he continues on in his, in his life, Father, Lord, even at his work. Father, we also pray for Nohea, Father, touch her. Strengthen her, Lord God. Strengthen her faith in you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we also pray our, for our unsaved loved ones, Lord God. We ask we continue to lift them up before you, Lord God. We ask that you pray that you would send people their way, Father. That you would send them their way, Father, Lord, to share the gospel, share the love of Jesus with them, Father. Lord, that they would make a decision to serve you, to love you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord. And, Father, for those that are, were here, Lord God, at the altars, Father, Lord, that you would grant their heart's desire, Father. Bless them as they come before you in faith, Father, lifting up their prayers before you. 
And so, Lord, we thank you once again, Lord, for giving us this opportunity, Lord God, to pray. And, Lord, as a body, we want to come before you, Lord God, and we want to pray for one another. And so, Lord, we lift up these prayers before you as we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. 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 God bless you all. My home is in heaven, just waiting for me. And when I get there, how happy I'll be. My home is in heaven, where the rent is free. My home is in heaven, just waiting for me. And when I get there, how happy I'll be. My home is in heaven, where the rent is free. For Jesus I'm glad the Lord paid it for me. Amen. How about you? Hallelujah. And so once again, we'd like to welcome everyone into this new year the Lord has blessed us with. And also everyone live streaming, we thank you for joining with us and welcome you for spending this time as we are blessed in fellowship with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So call a prayer Sunday evenings <clears throat> at 5.30 when next week Sunday when we have service. And also we have call a prayer on Wednesday at 6.30. And those of you that, and there's been the faithful ones coming out and spending time in prayer. And that's why prayers have been answered. And the faithful ones have been coming and praying every week. And those of you that can find some time, even five, ten minutes, if you're close by, passing by, coming home from work, stop in, <clears throat> spend a few moments. Prayer works. Hallelujah. Also, coming up on January 5th at 5 p.m., <clears throat> memorial service for Alexander Ponatowski, Jr., We'll be here at, uh, at the church, and those of you can come out and support the family. And more information is on the bulletin board. You can check that out. Also, the blanket drive is still in progress. And today is the last day to sign up for those that uh, will be packing and those that will be going out to deliver or doing both which will run from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. So, and that is, everybody remember, that's going to happen on January 7th, because we're in a new year. No way I can mess that up, right? <laughs> I couldn't say December. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Well, today, first Sunday of the month, is always Mission Sundays. And to your faithful participation and giving towards missions, $1,427. Amen? Praise the Lord. Remember, helping to support others to build the kingdom. Amen? Those that have gone forward. Just like we've gotten saved, someone shared. So we have others going forth to share. And they need help and support. And we thank everyone and everyone live streaming for your continued support uh, towards missions. Hallelujah. And we thank everyone that's been utilizing our app and the different features there and, and things to 
review and other things to get information about. And we thank everyone for utilizing that tool. It's a great tool, amen? I like it. Hallelujah. Technology has its good and its bad, but it's great when we use it for God's glory. Amen? Hallelujah. And at this time, we're going to ask for God's blessings upon our missions offerings and our regular tithes and offerings. Dear Heavenly Father, loving God, once again, dear Lord, we come to the foot of your throne where we never get tired, Lord, coming to be in your presence, dear Father. And dear Lord, we want to thank you for always blessing us and blessing us as you brought us into a new year, dear Lord. And Lord, we ask for your blessing, anointing upon the tithes and offerings that has come forth, dear Lord, from your people with cheerful hearts, dear mighty God, that you may use it and multiply for your glory, O Lord. This we now ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. He cares for you. Cast your burdens unto Jesus. He cares for you. Higher, higher, higher. Who died? <laughs> What's going on? It's a new year. We've got to be joyful. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God the glory. Amen. Yes. But is that your prayer this morning? Whatever that, what, that video was, was flashing up, that should be our prayer. You know, every year we make resolutions. You know, in the beginning of the year, we always look back at our past years. And we also... When we do that, we want to look, do better than what we did the past years. Amen? Amen? So our prayer for this new year is to seek God more. Amen? How many of you guys want to seek God more? Yeah. Amen. What about those to care deeper for? How many of you guys want to care deeper for people? Yeah. Amen. That should be our desire every single day. How can we bless somebody? Got to remember that, that acronym, JOY, Jesus what is next? Others. And what is the last one? You. 
Sometimes we get them backwards, yodge. <laughs> Can it be us first? J is for Jesus. O is for others. Always, every single day, you look for an opportunity to bless somebody. You may be blessing them with a, maybe a, a prayer. Maybe blessing them someplace, um, you know, they need food or whatever. Always an opportunity. God will give us opportunities every single day to bless others. Amen? And the last one is us. We, 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 when we do our five-finger uh, five prayer, what is the last one? It's us. It's not saying that we, we you know, we're the last one. No, it's just that we always want to care about Jesus first, care about others, and care about ourselves last. How many of you guys want to love louder, as what the video was saying? Yes, and that's our, our desire should be. We want to love on one another. God called us to love. God reminded us in his scripture that people are not going to know who Jesus is, but they'll know who Jesus is by how we love one another. Amen? He'll know, people will know that we are his disciples because of our love for one another. How many want to give more this year? God has blessed us over and over and over. He has blessed us. So when he blesses us, we also want to definitely want to bless others. Amen? And even if he did, does not bless us with the things that we want, we still bless people. Amen? How many of you guys want to live more faithfully for the Lord this 2023? Amen. No matter what things that come through our lives, we're going to face some hardships in 2023, but we want to continue to live faithfully for Jesus Christ. How many of you guys want to serve passionately more this 2023? Amen. We want to serve God. That's what God called us to do. And not to just to sit in his pews and Sunday after Sunday, we just sit in his pews and go home and do nothing. We need to be about our father's business. Get people out there that don't know Jesus Christ and we need to let them know. Amen. That was that gift from last week. The gift of sharing. We got to share. You guys have testimonies. Share it. Share it with, with somebody this year. Make it a goal once a week. Make it a goal to see if you can share your testimony with someone at least once a week. And maybe you can do two, three, four times a week. But make it a point to serve passionately, to share your faith, to seek his faith, and to know his word. I think that should be all of our prayers this 2023 is to get to know God more. The only way we can get to know him is we need to be in his word. Amen? Amen. We've been preaching this time and time again. And the reason why I preach this and why all the other ministers preach this, because I was at that point in my life, I never picked up the Bible. The only time you see this Bible coming out is Sundays when I sat on the pews. So if I went through that, I know people in these pews are going to do the same thing. The only way you're going to... You're going to get your life back in order. The only way you're going to feel the joy of the Lord, because he is our strength, the only way we can get through our problems, you got to be in his word. Because it's God's word that's going to uplift us. It's going to get us back on our feet. It's going to help us in 2023. The more you get to know the Lord, the more you're going to see how much he loves each and every one of us. Amen. So in 2023, we want to definitely know the Lord and know his word more. And we want to worship Jesus every day of our lives. Amen? Every day is a worship unto the Lord. No matter at work, no matter at school, we're worshiping God. Amen? And so in 2023, I pray it would be a blessing unto you, all of us here this morning, those joining us via live stream. God has something wonderful in store for each and every one of us. Amen.
So let's continue on pushing forward for the Lord. Like I, we've been singing this couple songs this um, morning. God is coming soon. How many of you guys believe that? Well, we got to live the, live it. We got to live with anticipation. That's what the Bible calls it. That's what the Bible describes how we need to live this Christian walk with anticipation. When you live with anticipation, remember when you finally realize, hey, I'm going to Disneyland. Oh, I'm, back in my days it was Castle Park or, you know. <laughs> I was excited. Oh, I was living, I couldn't even sleep the, next, the, the, the night before. Why? Because I was anticipating the time that we're going to go and have fun. Or we're going to go because there's something good that I'm looking forward to. That's heaven. We've been thinking about it this morning. That should give us joy. Amen. That is what God called us to, to do, is to live this life with joy, with love, with sharing, with doing whatever we can for the Lord. Amen. So 2023, I can't, I can't wait for this year. You know, there are some good times and some bad times, but God is good. God is faithful. He's going to see us through each and every day. But this morning, as we begin this new year and as we begin our first service of 2023, we want to begin by, first of all, doing something very special. is coming together as a family to partake of Holy Communion. I mean, what a way to bring in the new year, 2023, by remembering and by looking back at what the Lord has done for us in 2022. Not only that do we look back at what he has done, but look back what he has done 2,000 years ago, that he went to the cross of Calvary because of his love for us. Amen? And so at this morning, we want to begin this, this service, and we want to look back at what the Lord has done for us. We also want to look forward as we were singing this, this um, couple songs we've been singing in our praise and worship as we look forward to his second coming. How many of you guys believe in the blessed hope? We look forward to his coming. One day God is going to rescue us from this world. If he doesn't take us in death, he's going to rescue us. He's going to rapture the whole church and we're going to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. So we're going to proclaim and look forward to his coming, and we're going to proclaim his death until he comes. And for the believers this morning, it's also a time to look within. 2022 wasn't a good time for some. Some of, them, some of us, there was a good times and stuff, but it's a time that we can look within. It's a time that we need to search our hearts this morning. You know, growing up back in uh, Kaimaki, we used to live right next to the cemetery. And um, the, it was right in the backyard. We, we could go right, you know, into the cemetery. And that's what we would do. As kids, we would, would play in the cemetery. That was our playground. But we would go and had so many tombstones there. Some had pictures, some were didn't. But what was uh, that every tombstone had it was these things. It was the date that person died, the date that the person was born. And if you look at every tombstone, you had that little dash right between. Amen. What are you going to do with that dash? The dash is what we're living in today. 2023, we're living in that dash. What are we going to do in that dash? You know, I, I forget, I think it was at a funeral. I challenged these, uh, the people there. It was a weird funeral message. I, I thought it was. It wasn't a normal funeral message. But I challenged those that was there. What are you going to do with that dash? We got to live this dash for Jesus Christ. We know that. But we got to live this dash, loving one another. This world that we live in is, uh, 
You know, it's the world. It's not pleasant. But we can make that world a pleasant place to live. Amen? It's in that dash is what are you going to do? So I challenge the people. Don't be fighting. Don't be bucking heads with people. You love on one another. That's how you can, you can make this world a better place, is to show the love of Jesus to people. So maybe this year or this past year, you've been bucking heads with your family, with your mom. I know, I've, I know of many people that never talked to their parents because they had some oath against their parents. Let it go already. Give it up to God. It's going to come a time when that tombstone on your tombstone is going to have that death date. Did you ask for forgiveness? Did you go to your grave not making right with your parents or your children? What are you going to do with that dash? You love on people. God has called us Christians to love as he loved, unconditionally. Even though they spit at your face, even though they turn your back against you, you still love them. Amen? I'm not saying that you go up to them and you just, you whole molly molly them. No. You just love them. And you remind them that you love them. Amen? Enough with the bucking heads. Enough with the fighting with your parents, with your, your children. Some of you guys have been talked to your child because you guys bucking heads. Power already. Enough. God called us to love one another. Don't ever regret or have any regrets when that person that you have ought against dies. Then you're going to cry and say, oh, I should have done this. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Too bad. That's too late already. Do it now. Amen? What are you going to do with that dash? So in 2023, God has given us another day Another year, he, hopefully another year to keep on living in that dash, keep on living for the Lord, keep on loving for the Lord. So we need to look within this morning as we take communion. We need to look within. If you have any ought against a brother or sister, if you, if you have any ought against your family, I give you permission, go, go outside, go give them a call and ask for forgiveness. Amen? Don't ever have regrets. You'll never, if you ever uh, talk to someone on a deathbed and you ask them, you know, what do you want more? Or what, what is your regrets? Or, you, you know, you ask them that question. What are some things that you want to take back? You never, you never um, hear somebody say, you know, I wish I spent more time at work making, you know, money or working the overtime. Or, you know, I wish I did this and did that. No, the, the thing that they always say is that they wish they could spend more time with their family. Time is of the essence. Amen? God has, it's a blessing. God has given us time. Time to go and make right. So this morning, I want to encourage you to make right, to look within. And if you need to make right with your, your family member or whoever, you go and make right. Let's start this new year loving the Lord and loving others. Amen? So I, as I ask our elders to come up or to prepare to make their way up here to administer the emblems, I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 28. But here it reads, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he had broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink of it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then when, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup 
of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So as the ministers or as the elders start to administer the emblems, maybe you need to go up to a brother or sister. Maybe you need to go and make a phone call. Make right with God. Because God has called us to make right, to love one another. And as we take up these emblems, we remind ourselves of what the cup represents and what the, the cup of grape juice represents. Amen? Amen. As we partake of the bread this morning that represents the broken, bruised, beaten body of our Lord. As a symbolic symbol today to represent that, we take this bread and as we take it, we ask Father, as we partake of the bread that represents the broken body. Father, as we take this, Father, we honor you this day. And we take it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may partake of the bread. So this cup that we have in our hand, again, is a representation of the shed blood, the precious blood of Christ shed on a cross for us. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there'd be no forgiveness, no remission of sin. And so we do this in remembrance as commanded by the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for guiding our way, dear mighty God, and 
ministering to each and every one, dear Lord, this day, helping us to remember and remind us, dear Lord, of what you've done for us. We ask your blessings on this, continually reminding us, dear Lord, to give thanks and praises to you and to remember always what you did for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Take and drink. Amen, amen. Well, once again, I want to welcome you to our first service in 2023. I don't know what a better way to, to start this new year, being in the house of God, being with the, the children of God, and praising the Son of God, amen? I mean, what a better way to, to celebrate or to bring in this new year, to be in church, to be in church to praise God. But we're here beginning a brand new year, the year 2023. How many of you guys are excited for all the things that's the God, that the Lord has in store for us? Amen. I mean, we look forward to see what God has in store for us. And so as believers, you know, we rely on God. We don't believe in luck. We don't believe in, uh, you know, all this other stuff. But you see throughout our New Year's traditions, plenty of people get different types of traditions, all to bring good luck, all to ward off evil spirits. I mean, crazy stuff they do. Amen? So I did, you know, a, a little Google search, and I was looking at people that uh, all these different countries on how they bring in the New Year, how they bring in the New Year, um, the New Year and all the types of traditions that they, they, you know, come up with all because of good luck rituals, all because to have a better year and, you know, all this kind of other stuff. But in Ecuador, they burn uh, scarecrows to banish any ill fortunes or bad things that happened in the past year. In Germany, they believe that the circle is a symbol of success, so they eat donuts. Oh, that's a good one right there. <laughs> I'll eat donuts. Not for bring good luck, but just to eat donuts. <laughs> I know. Denmark, Denmark. If you find a pile of broken dishes at front of, at the front of your door, then you are certainly in Denmark because their tradition is that they would throw unused plates at the front doors of families and friends for good luck. And the more plates you find outside your home, the more luck that you have in a year. Don't be coming in my house and throwing plates. I'm going to throw them right back at you guys. <laughs> in Spain, at 12, the people there would eat 12 grapes, one at each stroke of the clock. This is supposed to bring good luck, prosperity, and happiness. In South Africa, the people there would party, and they would throw all their appliance or some of their appliance out of their window, representing that adage, out with the old and in with the new. Crazy. <laughs> Imagine trying one when you're stoked <laughs> outside. Crazy. Others in other countries, many would scrub their homes, would sweep up their homes, uh, and basically saying that they were sweeping or cleaning out the bad things and making room for the new things. Here in America, throughout our country, we see parades. I mean, they don't celebrate it as, as much as Fourth of July, I believe, yeah. Fourth of July is more what people celebrate. But here in Hawaii, it's different. Fourth of, Fourth of July is like, ah, small kind, you know. But New Year's is crazy. But here in America, you know, they, they, they have parties, parades. They have some, um, you know, fireworks. But most Americans, they will go and watch the dropping of the ball at midnight in Times Square, both in person or on television. Also, some throughout our uh, country or in the United States, they eat black-eyed peas, pork, or cabbage as a symbol of good luck. Just eat them. <laughs> Crazy, huh, these kind of stuff. In Hawaii, like I said, there's no place like Hawaii for New Year's. How many of you know that? I don't know if they did that this year, but 
Did they park on a freeway? Because the last time I saw that picture last year, they did? Ah, oh, they had signs this year. <laughs> crazy. They would, on the highways, they park just to watch the fireworks. Crazy. But here we celebrate New Year's. Not just New Year's. We sell them, celebrate them all year round. Amen. <laughs> every, every day. Get somebody popping fireworks. It's like, I can't even imagine that. Oh, we want to go outside and go pop one firework. I don't know. I don't know how people, they, they just pop it year, year round. But more and more, you know, even though if it's, you know, people we hear a year um, throughout the year, starting October all the way to New Year's, we start hearing it more and more and more. But there's no place like Hawaii for New Year's. Throughout the night, you hear fireworks going off, you know, nonstop. And at the stroke of midnight, it's like a fireworks show. Last night, I was trying to sleep. I had my... My AirPods, you know, those noise ca- canceling, I still could hear the, the, the fireworks. I couldn't go sleep. And so, you know, at 12 midnight, they started to pop, go off. I saw some pictures this morning of, of, uh, of Hawaii. It looks like a fireworks show. I mean, you, you can park probably, uh, definitely your place at Philip. you can w- watch the good fireworks show. Crazy. For me, I, I used to do that when I was in the world. But now, I mean, I can't even imagine us spending thousands of dollars going up in, in seconds. <laughs> Crazy. But people spend that much just for, for fireworks. But lighting off fireworks here in Hawaii was a tradition that started back in China, which made their, its way down here. It was to chase off those evil spirits. Many still do for that reason, but most of the people nowadays is just doing it for the enjoyment. Other traditions in Hawaii includes eating noodles. I ate noodles yesterday, but it wasn't for good luck. <laughs> it was because I was hungry for noodles. <laughs> but, you know, they eat noodles. Some buy these um, karumatsu decorations they, they have in their homes. Um, they place it outside their homes. Families either pound mochi they eat mochi, or some have, you know, do all these things to bring good luck, to bring peace, good fortune, to bring happiness, to bring long life. I mean, all these traditions throughout our world, all to bring in the new year. But we know as believers, we don't believe in good luck. We believe that everything comes from God. Even the things that he let, let go is to refine us. You know, those things that we think is bad is to refine us to help us to rely on God. But we don't believe in, in good luck. We believe that, that God is always the center of our lives. But the point is this, that there's just something special about bringing in the new year. We know that a brand new year brings in a, a new and fresh opportunities for every one of us here this morning. It's a fresh new start in a new year. We know that this past year, we as we was looking forward um, as believers with anticipation of the Lord's coming. And this year, too, we're going to look forward to the Lord's coming. If not, let's continue on, marching on, continue on living for the Lord. But as we look past in this past year, we see that the things that we need to change, the things that we need to get better or do things better, and that's what New Year's is all about. It's a time that we can kind of reset Look back at our past or our, that past year and try to change stuff around so we can have a better year. And that's why people make all these resolutions. They make all these, these promises. It's just so we can have a brand new start. So we're heading into a brand new year with endless possibilities. And we must make the best of it with the Lord's help. For we are going to um, do our best to live this life as the Lord has called us to live. So this past year has been hard for many, many within our church, the, lo- the loss of jobs, maybe your financial situation might have took the turn for the worse, maybe there was a family uh, problem that you had to deal with, maybe there was a marriage problem that you had to deal with this past year, or maybe this past year you, f- you saw that your child or your grandchild had walked away from the Lord. Or maybe you just lost a loved one during this past year and there is just an empty place in your heart this morning. 
But just within our church, we lost so many that were near and dear to our hearts. We lost Brother Eddie. And I say loss because we lost, but God being a wonderful man in the Lord. And he's praising the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. But we've lost Brother Eddie LaBoy, Brother Elliot Faso, Nicole's dad, Susan Paval. I don't know if you guys know that was Chastity's mom. Um, She went home to be with the Lord. Benji Fernandez. Clint Torres, and also last is, our, is A.J. Poniatowski. I mean, we're thankful that they all went home to be with the Lord, but we still miss them, amen? amen? We still miss them. So I'm sure that we could all say that this year we had some good days. We also had some bad days. But it's something that we can look forward to is that God will be with us. He was with us in 2022, and he will be with us in 2023. But we can all say that we're going to, we all have some good days in the past year, and we also have those trying and testing days as well. But we need to remember this, church. God has promised, he never promised us smooth sailing, but he did promise us a safe landing, amen? You know, I read that stuff on a card, and it really spoke to me. Because when I deal with things, situations, that's what I go to. Is that God has never promised us a smooth sailing, but he did promise us a safe landing. So we are going to face those trying and testing times, but God is true to his word. He said he will be with us. He said he will never leave us. He said he will fight for us. He said he would walk with us through those dark valleys. He will comfort us and strengthen us during our time of need. He will heal the brokenhearted. He will bind up our wounds. He he hears our cries and he will deliver us from our troubles. That's the kind of God we serve, amen? That's the God we serve, amen? That's the God we serve. So at this this time, as we start off this this morning service and as we... um, And as we look forward to 2023, I want to start off this service by looking back. You know, I just talked about the things that we went through. Also, I I want to also talk about the things that this church went through. So I want to go to a video that um, that, um, Elias had put together. is to look back at 2022. God has blessed this church. He has blessed this church over and abundantly. And uh, and it's not, uh, it's all because of you. And it's all because of you. So I want to look, watch this video at this time.
Sorry, I went kind of off script there. <laughs> I was excited. I want to preach the word already. Amen. Let's, let's, let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, once again, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you, Lord God, Father, Lord, that we can look into your word uh, this morning, Lord God. So, Lord, we ask this, that you would bless this time, Father, Lord, as we continue to just dig deeper into your word, Lord God, so we may just draw closer to you. So, Lord, we pray, Father, Lord, that you would speak to every heart, Lord God, this morning as you spoke clearly to me, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this morning, we've got about maybe 15 minutes left. I just want to share with you this morning a message called, and this is our New Year's message, and basically this message I will continue in a couple of weeks, but this message is called Trusting God in 2023, Even If. You know, back in November, the, our leaders, workers at our um, annual conference in November, we got together and we voted on this theme. And this is going to be our 2023 theme for this year is that is trusting God even if. I mean, that should all just speak with, to you right now. Trusting God even if. Because sometimes things go, come our way that we don't trust God. But we trust God even if things don't go our way. And so this morning, I'm going to just share with you just a brief introduction to this theme. And uh, I'm going to share with you this introduction that's going to lead into our next sermon uh, series in a couple of weeks called Trusting God Even If. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's turn to Daniel chapter 3. And we're going to read from verses 13 to, through 18. Now I suggest you read the whole chapter, chapter 3, very wonderful chapter. I mean, one of the best chapters in the Bible because you want to see why of uh, these three young men that stood up for the Lord. But read the whole chapter. Read chapter 2 because it, it, it paints the picture of where, uh, what, um, where they were at at this time and what was going on at this time. But I just want to read from verses 13 through 18. And it reads, And Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they, brought, when they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is this true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Is this true that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the god or the gold statue I have set up? Verse 15, I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the, the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refu refuse to, you will be thrown in immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Verse 16, it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into that blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able. How many of you guys know that God is able? Amen. Amen. The God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power. Your majesty, now we need to take note, verse 18, your majesty, but even if he doesn't, we want to make you, this clear to you, your majesty, that you will never, we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up. Even if. We got to take note of verse 18. I mean, that should excite you. That should be our example when we face these things in our lives. Even if. That's the same type of thing that when we talk about, you know, this and that, but God. This is another one that, that should excite you, even if. Trusting God, even if. The question for you this morning is, as I, we bring in this new year, is what are you going to do when the pressure of this life squeezes you? What are you going to do when you face these, these pressures, these things, these trials, tribulations, in your life, what are you going to do? What is it going to come, what's going to come out of you? Are you going to bow down? Or are you going to stand firm and you're going to stand up? The God we serve is able to save us 
The God we serve is able to deliver us, some other translation says. The God we serve is able to rescue us from the power, from your power, your majesty. I mean, I like it how the, um, these three young men, even though they, they were paying respect to the, to the King Nebuchadnezzar, they, it was kind of kind of wise what they were saying, your majesty and stuff. But let's look at that verse 18. And even if he doesn't answer, how many know that God at times will not answer the, the way we want him to answer? Why? Because that's not in God's will. Sometimes we want God to answer according to our will. Like I mentioned last week, God answered prayers. He always answers our prayers. It's a gift. He answers it either with a yes, with a no, or with a wait. How many of you guys like waiting? <laughs> I hate waiting. I don't like to stand in line. Last night I had to stand in line, oh, crazy, for just noodles. And that wasn't even for good luck. <laughs> But patience. God answer, answers prayers the way he wants to answer prayers. Amen? And so Nebuchadnezzar brought them in. And so he, he gave them another, another chance. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, you know, our God can save us. Our God can save us, will save us. Our God will deliver us. He will rescue us. But even if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow down. Even if he doesn't answer our prayers, I'm not going to cave in to bowing down to your God. They stood firm in the Lord. Amen? They stood firm in the Lord. Even if God didn't answer their prayers the way they wanted to be answered, we're still not going to bow down to your gods. You talk about adversity. You talk about trials. You talk about being under pressure. I mean, they had this fiery furnace looking them straight in the eye. They were under pressure. But they stood firm. All these adversities that they were facing, they never bowed down to their God, to the Nebuchadnezzar's God, to the statue. What came out of their mouth is even if. If you don't get anything out of this morning's message, take this, that two words, even if. Because even if God doesn't answer the way we want to answer, we're going to keep on serving God. We're going to keep on loving God. We're going to keep on walking with God. But that's what came out of their mouths. Even if, even if he doesn't answer, we still will not bow down. Even if we, he doesn't answer our prayers, we will not cave in to those things. That's the kind of trust we got to have. An even if trust. Amen? We got to have that even if attitude. I mean, that's a true test of faith when we are faced with adversities in our lives. Even if God doesn't rescue me the way that, he want, uh, that I want him to rescue me, I'm not going to bow down. I'm going to keep on serving you. I'm not giving up. Even though he doesn't heal me the way that I want to be healed, I'm going to keep on serving God. Amen? God has been faithful to us. God has seen us through time and time again. He has walked through us, with us through those dark valleys. He has guided you and I through those trials and tribulations. He has protected us from the storms of life, from the evil one. Why would we turn our backs on God? Why would we bow down to the other gods? Amen? Why would we give up on God? God has done so much for us. Why are we going to ever turn our backs on God? And the reason why I said that is because when the going gets tough, people turn their back on God. So I want to encourage you this morning, don't turn your back on God. Even if he doesn't answer the way you, you wanted him to answer, 
you keep on serving him, you keep on loving him, you keep on walking with our Lord. What are you going to do when the pressures of this life squeezes you? What are you going to do when God doesn't answer your prayers the way you want him to answer? That should come out of our mouths during those times, even if, even if. We need to remember, church, that God is good. How many know that God is good? God is good and all the time? Yes. But do we really believe that? Is he good only when he's good to us? Or when we face these, these things, these storms, these trials, is he still good? He's still good. He's still good. He's not good only when the bills are paid. He's not good only when our marriage is going good or when our kids are serving the Lord or, or w- when we have a, a job. He's good even in those times that we're struggling, when our marriage is struggling, when our relationships are struggling. God is good, and he is good all the time. Amen? He is good all the time. So as we move ahead in 2023... And we know that we are going to have a definitely a prosperous and awesome year in the Lord. But even if we face these trials, even if we face these hardships, even if we face these adversities, we're not going to back down. We're not going to bow down to the devil. We're not going to bow down to these statues, these, these gods. We only bow down to one man, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So as we move on to this 2023, I want to encourage you to keep on moving forward. You know, I heard a story of a man, of, a, of these men years ago who were on a leaky boat. I mean, this boat was ready to fall apart, and they were in the middle of a rough and stormy sea. And so they were actually fearful of their lives. They didn't know whether or not this boat was going to sink. So one of these men went up to the captain and asked the captain, Captain, are, are we going to make it? Are we gonna, is this boat going to sink? And so the captain told the, the, this, man, this man that approached him, or one of his men, said, you know what? Our boiler right now is, is very old. Um, it's, uh, it's about to explode. So I don't know. We might have an explosion here on this boat. This boat is very old. We're taking on some water. But we're going to, you know, do what we can. And so he told this, uh, this man, he says, you know what, we may go up, we may go down, but at any rate, we're going to keep on going. And that's the same f- for us this 2023 as we face this new year. We may have those ups and we may have those downs, but we're still going on. We may have those smooth days and those bumpy days, but we're still going on. We may have those gentle days or those rough days, but we're going to still go on, even if. Amen? Even if. We're facing a brand new year, and we don't know what's going to bring to us, but we do know this, is that through this year, as all the years pass, that God is going to walk with us this 2023. That's something that we can hold on to, that God will be with us, through this year. Amen? He would be with us. He would rescue us because we serve a mighty God. We serve a God that is powerful. We know that God is going to walk us through this life or this, this year. Also, we got to remind ourselves that we don't do this life alone. God is with us, but God has brought people into our lives to walk this, this life together. That's why we have our church family. We may buck heads at times. We may get upset. We may f- have ought against our brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why I say to forgive. Because we can't do this life alone. God has given us, each and every one of us here. I need you. We all need each other. Amen. But we need to walk this life together. So at this morning, I want to call up our worship team. I want to welcome them back up to our our the platform and joining me here this morning. But I want to end this first service by joining hearts together as we sing this, once again, the song, Bind Us Together. 
Not only do we need God, like I said, but we need each other. We can't do this Christian walk alone. We need Jesus Christ first and foremost, but we need each other. We need each other to encourage one another, to uplift one another, to pray for one another, to be a shoulder to cry on, to love on each other. We need each other this year. We don't know what this year holds for us, but we do know this, that God is faithful. God is true to his word. God is still in control. So let's continue to keep on moving forward for the Lord. And let's keep on binding us. Let's keep on binding together as a family in unity as we walk this 2023. So we want to end with this song, Bind Us Together. Let's all rise as we sing this last song. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us. one. together amen i want to once again wish you guys all a happy and prosperous new year i pray that the lord will continue to guide you through uh, this year 
binding us together. But even if, remember that word, even if, even if he doesn't answer those prayers, you continue to serve and love God to the best that you can. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord God, for binding us together, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us another day, Lord God, that we can do this Christian walk together as a church, as a family, Lord God. And Father, Lord, we know that this, this new year will be a wonderful and prosperous new year. But Lord, there are also going to be some times when we're going to face things in our lives. Things that may hinder us, things may, that may hamper us, Lord God. But even if those things come our way, Lord God, we want to serve you and love you to the best that we can. So Lord, we thank you, Father, for this new year. We thank you, Lord God, for those that are here, those that could not make it, those that are joining us via live stream. Lord God, that you would continue to bless them, Father, Lord, over and abundantly throughout this year. Father, help us, Lord God, each and every day to love you, to serve you, and to praise you, Father. And we thank you once again, Father, for this opportunity, Lord God, that we can meet together, Lord God. We ask as we make our way home, Father, Lord, as we spend time with our family this uh, this rest of this day, Father, Lord, that you would keep us safe, Father. Bless us with a good night's rest as we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Happy New Year. Love you guys.